Welcome to this video on the executive self and the real self, one of a series of videos on transactional analysis concepts. When viewing this video, it is useful to have knowledge of the first order structural model, transactions, also known as TA proper, and the various aspects of the diagnosis of ego states. If you are not familiar with these different parts of TA, please take a look at our videos on them. The executive self and real self are titles which refer to specific ego states. The executive self is the ego state that directs our behaviour or how we act. This ego state can be described as having executive power over our behaviour. The real self, on the other hand, is the ego state we experience. It is the ego state we feel and think in. Most of the time these are the same. The ego state we think and feel in is the one we act in, and so our executive self and real self are perfectly aligned. To illustrate this, we can use the example of Claire, a company manager, who asks an employee, have you finished that piece of work? Her body language is open and attentive, and her tone of voice is level and neutral. This behaviour reflects an adult ego state. Therefore, we can say that Claire's adult ego state has executive power over her behaviour and is her executive self. Her words, designed to seek information, also reflect an adult ego state. Since they indicate her internal thoughts and feelings, we can say that her adult ego state is her real self. However, sometimes our executive self and real self are not aligned. We can act one way, but feel and think another way. In transactional analysis, this is known as incongruity. Incongruity can be difficult to detect, as people can become accomplished at hiding their true thoughts and feelings. Given this, we may have to use a variety of methods to check if a person's executive and real selves align or not. Effectively, this means using as many as possible of the four methods of diagnosing ego states behavioural, social, historical and phenomenological. As usual, the primary method is likely to be behavioural, but the others are often necessary since the subtle behavioural cues signifying incongruence can be difficult to spot. For an example of incongruity, we can return to Claire, the company manager, who is talking to another staff member. Claire says, this needs to be done quickly, okay? And as she does so, she is looking directly at her and speaking in a level voice. From her adult behaviour and words, it seems Claire's adult ego state is her executive self. However, looking more closely, we can see that she may be experiencing a different ego state as her real self. Using behavioural diagnosis, we can see that though she is speaking in a level voice, there is a hard edge to her tone and her words are clipped. In addition, she is looking at the staff member through slightly narrowed eyes and wringing her hands. From historical diagnosis, we know that Claire does this when she is in her parent ego state. Added to the other clues, we can deduce that Claire's parent ego state is her real self. Due to her appearing to be in one ego state, but experiencing her real self in another, it is likely that Claire is involved in a type of ulterior transaction known as a duplex transaction. In duplex transactions, the communication appears to be adult to adult, but there is a hidden message between other ego states. In this case, Claire is in parent and, using social diagnosis, we may assume the other staff member is in child. More information on duplex transactions may be found in our video on transactions. Over time, different ego states can be our real self and our executive self. To explain this movement, Eric Byrne, the founder of transactional analysis, proposed his energy theory. It holds that each person has a certain amount of cathexis, or mental energy, sometimes known as psychic energy. This is split into three types, bound cathexis, unbound cathexis, and free cathexis. Bound cathexis is unused energy that resides within a particular ego state and cannot move to others. Unbound cathexis, alternatively, it's energy that also resides within a particular ego state and cannot move to others, but is being used. Finally, free cathexis is an amount of energy that can move between all ego states. It may be used where and when necessary. 
the sum of unbound cathexis and free cathexis is known as active cathexis. It is possible to have active cathexis in more than one ego state, meaning that more than one ego state is influencing our behaviour. However, the behaviour that is apparent to others, our executive self, comes from the ego state with the highest amount of active cathexis. Our real self, on the other hand, comes from the ego state with the highest amount of free cathexis. For an example of this, we can return to Claire, who is in a meeting with other managers from her company. At the start of the meeting, she is paying attention and doing her best to contribute. Since her highest amount of three cathexis and her highest amount of active cathexis are both in her adult ego state, it is clear that her adult ego state serves as both her real self and her executive self. As the meeting goes on, however, Claire starts to get irritated at the behaviour of one of her colleagues who is clearly trying to disrupt the meeting. With each disruptive act, Claire moves more free energy into her parent ego state until finally she experiences her parent ego state as a real self. With parent as a real self, but with adult still as her executive self, Claire is in a state of incongruity, though anyone observing her might think that, at first glance, she is still in her adult ego state, as her adult is still serving as her executive self. This is evidenced by her still attempting to participate in the meeting. However, closer inspection, using one or more of the four ego state diagnosis methods, may reveal subtle clues that show she is now experiencing her parent ego state as her real self. As the meeting continues, Claire's colleague gets more disruptive, and as he does so, her increasing frustration causes bound cathexis in Claire's parent ego state to start turning into unbound cathexis. She is moving towards behaving in parent. Eventually, there is enough unbound cathexis in Claire's parent ego state for it to combine with the three cathexis there to mean that the highest amount of active cathexis is no longer in Claire's adult ego state, it is in parent. As a result of this, Claire has her parent ego state as her executive self and starts behaving accordingly, beginning with interrupting her colleague and berating him for his attitude. Claire now both has her parent ego state as her executive self and is experiencing it as her real self and she is no longer in a state of incongruity. The first order structural model, transactions and the diagnosis of ego states are dealt with in other videos. Please visit our channel for more and subscribe if you'd like to be notified when new videos are uploaded.